Number one, you need to learn to be humble. The prosperity of a man is far beyond the millions that are in the bank account. Although that's included too, it also cuts across other aspects, such as health, mental and physical wellness, family, friends, associations, and so on. It is the pleasure of God to see you prosper in all aspects of your life. But some things have to be learned. Otherwise, you cannot prosper. And one of such is humility. To be humble is to know that God is your source and you cannot achieve anything without your source. It is to acknowledge that He alone owns you. To realize and be convinced that every good and perfect gift comes from Him alone and as such, whatever you have or possess comes from Him alone. Also, you are to realize that you are a custodian of whatever treasure that He has committed into your hands, be it wealth, wisdom, riches, long life, or other resources. Learning and having the mindset that you are only a custodian and not the owner of that treasure will make God trust it into your hands. On the other hand, when you are proud and believe that you are a master of yourself, then God cannot prosper you because, from the beginning, God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. No one in the Bible that has ever walked with God did so with pride. Neither has God prospered someone proud. Job, who during his days was the wealthiest man at that time, was a humble and just man. Despite the storms he faced in his life, he remained humble, and because of that, double of everything he lost was restored to him. To be humble is to pledge your allegiance to God alone. The day you start to think that you can achieve or become great outside your source, God, you begin to die gradually. Also, to be humble is not to look at someone else as less or inferior. You understand that you are all human and the same. If you have what another person doesn't have, then see that as a privilege given to you by God, rather than an avenue to mock the person. Learning and understanding humility, it is easy for God to entrust prosperity into your hands. Beyond wealth, God will prosper you with wife, children, people, connections, jobs, or assignments, because He can trust you with the lives of other people. Number 2. You need to learn to be generous. After having the understanding that you are a custodian of whatever treasure that God has committed into your hands, He expects you to distribute it evenly among His people. When you have the mindset that whatever you have belongs to you alone or is for your permission only, it will hinder God from prospering you. Learn to be generous. Learn to be selfless and sacrificial. Being stingy and selfish will not open the doors of heaven for God's blessings upon your life. A stingy man cannot make a good husband and father. Therefore, God will not prosper you with a wife and children because he will not want them to suffer. A selfish and unsacrificial woman cannot make a good wife and mother. Therefore, he will not prosper you with your own family yet. When God can count on you to be a channel through which he can provide for his people, he will not withhold his prosperity from you. Before you can be trusted with greater and bigger responsibilities, you have to prove worthy of the little that you are with now. If you are faithful with the little that is committed into your hands, it will be added to it. And before long, you will be carrying the responsibility of nations and generations upon your shoulder. Therefore, learn to be generous and sacrificial with the little that is in your hands now. Don't say you will wait until more is added. Always be ready to be an answer to someone's prayer. 
learn that you are only a custodian, meant to distribute it evenly amongst God's people, and watch how you walk into unlimited prosperity. Number 3. You need to learn to be tolerant or accommodating. Your prosperity is not just about you alone, but about others and everyone attached to you. Therefore, you have to learn to be tolerant. As you go about your daily routines, you interact with people, since as a man, you were never made to live in isolation. You don't expect everyone to behave or act the same way because everyone is unique in their making. As such, you need to learn to tolerate others. There are times that people behave below your expectations. You get disappointed and all, but you have to accommodate their excesses and deal with them according to understanding. To be accommodating is to make people feel free and secure with you. When people can trust you and not be afraid to relate with you at any time, then it will be easy for God to prosper you. A man or woman who anyone can approach without being reproached is of prosperity. When the poor, the middle class, and the rich can relate with you freely, you will be entirely led to favor God for prosperity. When you are tolerant, you learn patience alongside, and patience is a virtue. You have to learn to tolerate people from all age groups as well. Give everyone that comes around you equal right to prove themselves worthy. In other words, you don't act based on any prejudice. Don't be partial or biased in your relationship with others. Let nepotism be far away from you. In addition, you have to learn to respect and honor those who are ahead of you. This gives you the advantage to go higher than them, not by envy or competition. Number 4. You need to learn to give. Pains, disappointments, and hurt, especially from loved ones, can be sometimes difficult to forgive and forget. When your most trusted friend or family member does something that is unexpected, the pain cuts deep in your heart. You're often left with scars even after you've been healed. Learning to forgive and forget not only does you good for the sake of your health and mental well-being, but it also gives you an edge over them. When you forgive and forget people's offensive mistakes, your Heavenly Father forgives you your trespasses. Joseph is a perfect example of one who forgives and forgets people's trespasses. His own brothers sold him out to traitors and lied to their father that he was killed by animals. He went through a lot as a slave in Egypt, but he feared God and never held anything against them. He didn't forgive them only when he became a prime minister in Egypt. God already saw his heart that there were no lies or grudges or bitterness. He already forgave them before that, and that was why God prospered Joseph. The Bible said that even while he was in prison, he prospered, meaning prosperity is of the Lord, and he chooses to give it to whoever deserves it. No wonder he didn't find it difficult to reunite with them. Joseph didn't see it as a payment. He forgave the chief butler that forgot him in the prison because it was never said that he was angry with him and punished him. God saw all that in Joseph and prospered him, not just with fame alone, but in everything in a foreign land. When you learn to forgive and forget no matter your geographical location, you will be prospered by God. King David was another man that never held grudges against his major enemy, King Saul. He never did anything wrong to King Saul that warranted his death, but King Saul was after him day and night. King David had every right to be angry and bitter against him, but he never did. He had the opportunity to kill King Saul, but he never did. The Lord called David a man after his heart and prospered him in all. 
You have to learn to forgive and forget people, because surely they will step on your toes. But holding on to offenses and mistakes will not make you go far in life. It doesn't make God trust you with prosperity. Number 5. You need to learn to study, meditate, and act on the Word of God. God himself instructed Joshua after the death of Moses in Joshua 1 verse 8. He told Joshua to study the book of the law that Moses handed over to him. He was encouraged to meditate on it, and after that, success will be guaranteed to him. The guarantee of success is the guarantee of prosperity. Joshua obeyed the instruction indeed, and he did great exploits. The Word of God is given to you to guide, direct, and instruct you. When you dedicate quality time to study and meditate on it, then you are positioning yourself for God to prosper you. When you study and meditate on the Word, the power to act by faith according to what is written therein will overshadow you, and before long, you will begin to receive ideas, influence favor that will skyrocket you into undenying prosperity. The Word of God also shapes your character and makes you behave exactly how God wants you to behave. It helps you overcome some weaknesses that are human nature and grants you the strength to do the extraordinary. Every man desires that God should prosper them, but not all are willing to do what it takes to be prosperous, while some don't know the secrets to God's prospering them. Learn the secret of studying and meditating on God's Word today, and watch how He will prosper you.